If you're willing to settle for mediocrity just because a band is four decades old, you should really raise your standards. I'm with it. I'm hip. Yes, today we are ranking new albums from classic thrash metal bands, the cutoff year being 2019, and we're starting with Destruction's Diabolical in 2022. Now I went into this expecting a very mid run of the mill thrash metal album from a tired old band when this was announced, but what I got was a total rager that sounds like it was performed by musicians still in their 20s. This may be in part due to new guitarist Demir Eskik of Gamora, who really brings it on every song. Fun songwriting, total banger, endless riffs, I even ruffled a few feathers saying I think this might be better than some of their earlier material, so I'm putting this at fantastic. Next up, let's talk about Annihilator with Ballistic Sadistic in 2020. Stand down and change your course. Alice in Hell is honestly one of my favorite thrash metal debuts, but beyond their classics, I haven't been the biggest fan, and them remaking the already incredibly corny metal in 2022 hasn't helped to change that. Oh god, how embarrassing. As far as modern output goes, this one isn't all that bad. The songwriting is a little cookie cutter, but the guitar work goes pretty hard. I think the biggest issue is how dated it feels, and the vocals are still pretty corny, so I'm gonna put this one at good tier. Alright, the first of our big four here with Megadeth in The Sick, The Dying, and the Dead in 2022. To the very last beat of a dead man's pulse. Another album I really had no expectations about going in, but when they started dropping the singles, I actually got pretty hyped. Except for the shoehorned in Ice T section, Night Stalkers is one of my favorite thrash songs of that year. Dave really killing it with the riffs. One of the better modern Megadeth albums by far. It's got some lower moments for sure, but I was genuinely surprised with how much I enjoyed it. So I'm putting this one also at fantastic. Then we got our underdogs, Voivod with Synchro Anarchy in 2022. Really more of a progressive metal album than a thrash album, but it's always fun to see what form these guys will come in. And man, was I beyond impressed with this album. This was a great year, 2022, for thrash in general, but I didn't anticipate just how good this one would be. Not only would I put it in their top three albums, it made my top 10 of the entire year overall. Incredible musicianship with a lot of weird technical songwriting, lots of twists and turns to keep you guessing. Again, those people who comment, you should just be thankful that insert tired old band here is even putting out new music. You just don't seem to realize just how much competition there still is in the 40 plus year old band demographic. We're not, We're not too old for this. like you believe. We're, We're not too old for this shit. This one's going to perfection. Then we have Exodus with Persona Non Grata in 2021. I really just did not really care for this album and made my extended thoughts known in the review I did on release. The songs are pretty repetitive, the lyrics are extremely cliche, and the overall hour runtime makes it feel like kind of a chore to get through. Elitist has easily the most annoying vocals on the entire album and clickbait is super corny. There are some good elements though, like the fun gang vocals and harmonized solos. I'd say it hits a good sweet spot around the middle with prescribing horror, the beatings will continue until morale improves, and the years of death and dying. Not the worst, but not the greatest either. I'm putting this one at good tier. Then we got Municipal Waste with Electrified Brain. I think the only band on this list to not start in the 80s, but man, this was just such a fun record. I love me some party time crossover thrash and this delivered on that promise and then some. In fact, I was blasting this one in my car pretty much the entire month it came out with a big smile on my face and it easily made it onto my favorites list for that month. Nonstop rager after rager, which is especially impressive given its 14 tracks, electrified brain, demoralizer, 10 cent beer night, paranormal janitor, just a real blast to annoy your neighbors with. Putting this this one at fantastic. On the flip side, we have Tankard with Pavlov's Dogs in 2022. Being a How do you do, fellow kids? I'm just gonna keep it simple. This album is terrible. The, <laughs> the worst part is the endless stream of cringy boomer lyrics, especially on tracks like X Influencer. And unfortunately, the instrumentation doesn't do much to make up for it. Bland, boring. Next album, please. I'm putting this one at okay, and that's being very charitable. Then we have Zentrix with seven words. Another system released. A road controlled 
Now, I was strongly encouraged to re-listen to this album based on where it landed on my 2023 thrash metal albums ranking. And again, I really dig the riffs and guitar tone, but I just don't get anything from these vocals. Like, it's good, but also just very middle of the road overall to my ears. Credit where it's due for, again, some of the awesome guitar work. I gave it a C on that list, and I think I still kind of feel like it's just good, okay? We also got Venom Inc. with There's Only Black in 2022. Another one some people really loved, I just did not care for it. The vocals in particular are just very yowly sounding, the riffs feel very genetic. I struggled to get through it multiple times and then forgot it immediately every single time I tried. It's just lame, and in some ways it's almost worse than Tankard because, again, at least Tankard sort of made me laugh with how cringy it was. This is just a slog to get through, it's just so dull, so... Another one going to OK tier. Going back to the good stuff, we have Toxic with Dismorta in 2022. And seriously, some of the guitar work on this album is pretty face melting stuff. And again, I'm not always into those falsetto vocal approaches, but when it comes together so well, like I, I can look past it and actually enjoy it. Really righteous stuff again with some old school flair. I frequently say I'm tired of most bands recycling old formulas, but when they manage to do it better than anyone else, I have to give credit where it's due. So this one went to perfection. Next up is Razor with Cycle of Contempt in 2022. Just a fun headbanger of a record. Not particularly remarkable, but I love the riffage and speed. It has a certain grittiness to it too that makes it still feel very late 80s, early 90s. I'm not in love with it, but it's solid enough, so this one went to good tier. Next up is Creator with Hate Uber Alice in 2022. Creator constantly gets credit from me for having one of the more interesting discographies. You can check out my tier list of all of them. With all these different eras of their sound, and that trend continues with this one, this feels like a solid progression from the last two releases, mixing thrash, groove, and even some melodic death metal, as well as a curveball in Midnight Sun with guest vocals from Sophia Portnay. Not perfect, but definitely an album I listen to quite a few times and still enjoy revisiting. The only track I don't really like is the kind of corny Strongest of the Strong. I know this album was a bit divisive, people seem to either love it or hate it, but I just love how much ground it covers, and it's one of the more interesting and unique albums on this list, so it made it to fantastic. Alright, we've got Aggression with From Hell With Hate in 2022. I didn't really care much for this album, it feels very kind of haphazard, which can be endearing in some cases, but here it just seems a little bit messy, especially on the awful Crows of Still Creek. It has some moments like the very punky D-beat of the Night Stalker, but even these parts are pretty paint by numbers, so this one only landed at okay for me. Then we have Sodom with Genesis 19 in 2020. Being real, this album feels like it carries again some of the same youthful angst of bands even 30 years their junior. Tracks like Sodom and Gomorrah and Euthanasia never fail to get my head banging and my feet tapping. They're fast, hard, and to the point around four minutes each. The alternations between the blasts and D-beats alongside the relentlessly chugging palm mutes and Slayer-esque vocals is just fantastic. At 55 minutes, it could still use a little bit of trimming here and there, but I really dig it. This one ended up at great tier. We we also have Flotsam and Jetsam with Blood in the Water in 2021. This was another pretty big surprise for me in that year, especially as someone who, again, isn't much for thrash metal with the more heavy metal styled vocals. But in spite of my prejudice, my hat's off to Flotsam and Jetsam because this is a spectacular album that holds its own not only on this list, but also alongside stuff like the latest Blind Guardian. The riffing on every song really stands out and it manages to feel both nostalgic and entirely current at the same time. Blood in the Water is a truly epic tone setting opener, Burn the Sky is a rager, a place to die absolutely soars on those harmonized leads. This one's going to perfection. We also have Death Angel with Humanicide in 2019. 
Another band that dropped a banger debut back in the day and continues to deliver on the same promise to a new generation. Once more, I apologize for my ignorance on my initial ranking of this band during the live stream. I know better now. I made a mistake! Humanicide makes for a truly ruthless stampede of chugging riffs and ferocious soloing. I Came For Blood is a motorhead-infused headbanger perfect for the pit, the pact bringing more of a crossover vibe complete with fun backup vocals. Pretty damn consistent, not to the top of my list here, but still really high. It's going to... fantastic. All right, we have Testament with Titans of Creation in 2020. So Testament actually have a brand new album right on the horizon, and I'll be tier listing their entire discography then, but for now, we'll talk about their last one kicking off the new decade. It's probably going to be triggering to some of you to hear this, but Children of the Next Level did not impress me as an opener, feeling much more like a leftover Lamb of God track in places. Nice solo, though. And unfortunately, that's how I feel about a lot of this album. Everything just feels totally passable, slightly above average, even from an instrumental standpoint, but not particularly engaging with the vocals especially leaving something to be desired. Still better than certain albums on here, but kind of mid and definitely over long. If I had to pick a track, I do like Code of Hammurabi and Curse of Osiris. This one's going to great tier. I think it's just a little bit disappointing given the level of esteem that I give this band. Ugh. Then we have Sacred Reich with Awakening in 2019. <laughs> Back for their first album since 1996, Heal. It's always interesting to see what a comeback after such a long hiatus will bring. Unfortunately, I'm pretty lukewarm on this one. Right from the start, Awakening opens with a kind of repetitious riff that gets old real fast and the vocal performance isn't much better. Divide and Conquer feels like a pretty bland copy and paste of any number of other songs and Death Valley and Something to Believe genuinely made me want to put an ice pick through my ears. The drumming is pretty solid in places, but none of the riffs stand out and no disrespect but it just sounds like Phil is struggling to even hit a lot of these notes. So this one ended up at okay. You're a fucking disappointment. Alternatively, we got Possessed making a comeback too with Revelations of Oblivion in 2019. Seven Churches is one of my favorite proto-albums for both death and thrash metal of the 80s, and it's incredible to me that this many years later they could drop an album that feels straight out of that same era. Seriously, No More Room in Hell kicks the door to splinters as if the last 30 plus years never even happened. I'd even go so far as to say that these songs are better than Beyond the Gates, with not a dud among them. Jeff Beccara still bringing those classic old school vocals alongside the pummeling barrage of drums and distortion. The production once again still nailing that same dark cavernous vibe and who could say no to a bonus guest appearance from actor and friend of the band Peter Stormare. Excuse me? I said we cut off your Johnson! This one also ended up at perfection. You know what, examining this tier, I'm realizing one of these I feel like needs to bump down. And if it's gonna be any of them, honestly, I do think it's Megadeth. Like I really enjoy this album, but I also think it has more low points than some of these other ones. But next up we have Overkill with Scorched in 2023. <laughs> Overkill have one of the most inconsistent discographies out there, I would say, so it's always a crapshoot where one will land on the quality spectrum from fantastic to complete garbage. I wasn't particularly enthusiastic going into this one either based on the kind of paint-by-numbers singles, but it turns out the album's pretty good. The opening title track sets a high bar from the start with the triumphant tapping guitars and great riffing on both guitar and bass, pretty catchy chorus too. Similar notes for Twist of the Wick, which becomes a standout from the first listen, as did the banging harder they fall. And while closing track Bag of Bones has some super corny lyrics, it's just such a goddamn fun song to listen to at the same time. It still has some somewhat weaker songs, but even these have their moments. They actually end up in the upper half of their beastly discography tier list that I just did, and it's a pretty strong entry overall for a legacy band. So this one also going to great tier. And then of course we have Metallica with 72 seasons in 2023. <laughs> So I was not stoked for this album from the early singles. I know some people were drooling over Lux Eterna when it dropped, but for me, it just felt like more of that the same, we love everything Star Wars fandom style hype. There's hope, there's help, there's the 
please, please, please get a life foundation. I did somewhat like If Darkness Had a Son, though like most of the songs on here, it's twice as long as it needed to be, but the title track is easily the best, actually showcasing some strong dynamic songwriting, and the band working together as a well-oiled machine. Outside of that, though, there's not a whole lot to get particularly excited about. Most of the songs feel like very load era stuff, but they do have some moments. I like the bluesy earworm hook of Shadows Fall and the awesome bass intro to Sleepwalk My Life Away. Crown of Barbed Wire has a fun, spooky, doomy, Black Sabbath-esque section, and Chasing Light is a solid rocker with just a tinge of that old thrash metal energy. And while the 11 plus minute Enamorata is another overly ambitious and self-indulgent runtime, I do love those big chemist sounding guitar harmonies that come in during the second half. So not all bad, and if they just had someone to keep them in line with those track lengths and scaled the entire thing down to like 40 minutes, I think that it could be much higher on this list. But as it stands, I'm just feeling a good tier. Y'all check out this playlist for plenty more thrash metal rankings, including the new Metallica tier list, Megadeth, Creator, Voivod, and much more. And again, let me know down in the comments how would you rank these albums differently. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.